T minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hello guys and dolls, we are live. Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. I am joined by the illustrious Carl Fenton, the man who somehow managed to look like all the Guess Who characters all at once. Yep. And I'm joined by Mike, a man who was formally described as sexy. That was nice. So what do we have today? First and foremost, what I have is a hernia because <laughs> I had to get this giant box up to this table. And I can assure you that lifting this up here very nearly broke me as an individual. I also had another printer that was up here that I didn't realize how heavy it was. And when Which I is a super up, secret it, printer. It was a su super secret printer. So that couldn't be on the stream. And as I picked it up, I didn't realize it still had resin in it and a little bit went in my ear. So... It's been a fun evening so far. Already up to a good start, aren't we? Is this heavier than that big industrial resin print you got? What the uh, the oh, ultra centric? Yeah. Uh, do you know? I don't think it is. Don't you? That was in a big wooden well, box. Wasn't to it? be fair, this is still in the box, so this is really heavy. Um, but I, I don't. We know. don't know what's don't packed know. in there. Hi, Adrian. The box is only two by two, so you can see the truth right now of how tall James is. I'm normal height. People have seen me next to real people. Sam Prentice, you want a short person to review this, you get Sam, <laughs> Sam Prentice to review it. That's what you need. Sam could, Sam could climb inside it. <laughs> so I'm going to start by taking off the packing straps. Hello, nonstick. Mr. German. Is that... Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. Definitely oh. aren't gonna. Should have put the reading glasses on. I'll go in my bin nicely. Adrian, Adrian. So non-stick's got one of these. Yeah. How much resin does this bat hold? Oh, I think it's quite a lot. I think more than like... I'm gonna be happy putting in. <laughs> 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 we'll put it this way: we've got three kilos of eight k resin that frozen sent us so fingers crossed two liters <coughs> that much three liters we've got oh it's two that's... liters that it holds is it okay that, that's a is lot it? of resin two full liters to fill the to fill the vat feels like a lot okay so are we going to go in at the side i think we're going to have to aren't we well there's no way you're lifting it out of the box I don't know if this is going to be any easier, if I'm perfectly honest. Give, give or take, yeah, two yeah. litres. Oh. I get upset when I pour a litre in. Well, the good news is, is that this is going to be Mike's printer, so it's also his, pro it's also and his problem. Any other on, resin so. printers I've got are now redundant. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this is a monster, isn't it? Let's be honest. Just means... so. I don't do my models as big as James anymore for the reason being in my new workshop, I've not got the ceiling height. And this opens, doesn't it, frontwards? Yeah, like doors. But I haven't got the ceiling height to put big models now. So I'm having to do my models at like three, four hundred mil, which means I can do an entire model on this in one go. Yeah. And, and it's pretty quick as well, I believe. It's It's not the slowest. Large. Hold on. Look how big it is. Whee! Is that the side? This is the back. Oh, my God. So it is almost as big as the box. So the box is this this big. So I thought not, I had a tape not, measure, but that was not, really an overestimation of the tools that I have. All your tape not, measures, as we realised yesterday, are in the tape measure drawer. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll have to go to the tape measure drawer at some point. Which so really non-stick non says he spilt so much resin trying to put the resin back into bottles. Oh, okay. You should use a funnel, mate. It's really easy. Or, funnels or, are full. or just fill it halfway. 
Or just not empty it, just carry well, on Well, I mean, to be fair with non-stick, there's not really any point in putting resin in it, because whether he's got resin in it or not, he shrinks the same amount. So <laughs> it feels like he could just leave it alone and just treat it like a big cupboard. So, to be honest, he only goes in this press <coughs> shed for the bees, doesn't he? Let's be honest. And during the winter, there's no bees. Yeah. Is pet bees having a long sleep? Oh, that looks. This is why. This is where everybody gets real nervous about me just randomly. You'll see the table lean to the side in a minute. Well, I can see. Oh. <laughs> Camera nearly <laughs> went there. <laughs> it looked like the printer was falling. Then. No. <laughs> the printer's fine. Nobody panic. <laughs> 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 oh, that was so really a really short live stream. <laughs> oh, can yeah. you imagine? Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine? Frozen would be like, yeah, no, we don't want to work with you no more. Oh, Frozen would have been so angry. <laughs> can you imagine how hurtful their email would have been? <laughs> Just been like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> So, all that like that. And then, God, even the box is heavy. It's well, not very often. You, it's not very often you see a printer nearly the same size of a box, do you? Really? It's, I yeah. mean, it's basically the same size as the box. So I just need to. There, right. Okay. Oh, this could be tricky. All right, hold on. Oh, hernia number two. Ooh. Oh, that crashed into a lot of things. <laughs> eh. Okay. Uh. Ah, I did it. Oh, God, the plastic's so thick. It's it. You don't realize how big it is to actually see it next to someone. I've been super excited about this for weeks. What, what I'm size screen is about this? It since we went to the show. So, we managed yeah. to. So, th this came about because we went to form next. So at Form Next, we, we met up with Frozen and they didn't have anything specific to show off at the show. So we didn't do a video, but they were sort of really, really keen to pick up afterwards and uh, and sort of have a conversation about what we could do together. Hold on. That's just an empty box. Okay. Right. Hi, Phil. 15 uh, inch screen. Jesus. Okay. How much is the screen to replace non stick? Oh, right. I don't want to play that game yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not good, it's, it's not good. Like, <laughs> like I'm not going to be happy about it. I know that much. Right, let's unscrew this so we can pull this out properly. Hey, 3D Pete. So, Mr. Farmer said he might be on his lunch break later. And he might pop in and say hello. Right. Oh, God. It's like really hard to. Do you have to unscrew the, the bill? Well, I have. I've unscrewed the thing, but it goes inside of like a little lip. I just feel like there's a. Maybe if we just do this. Three to four hundred dollars. Cheap than before. I feel like Frozen mentioned recently that there's that there's had gone down in price. But I can't for the life of me remember what it went down from or, well, or but to. they did <laughs> they did increase their prices, didn't they, on the machines a little bit? They have increased the price of the machine. Yeah, oh, and they've dropped, but they've 
they've dropped some so, of it, you know, like replacement parts of it. So this is the build plate, which I think you can agree is pretty uh pretty hefty. So for some context, I've got a 10.1 inch build plate here on a on an old machine. And this oh. <laughs> but that's for a 10 that's for a 10.1 inch. I am too. <coughs> which you would consider a good, good size printer. Which you'd consider a pretty good size printer, like a satin or something like that, like do most people. That, that's monstrous. Absolutely giant. So now we should be able to get this. There we go. Right now we can get that out. So I don't need that. Toolbox. So. You might notice I bought the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus. Yes. This week to try and stand half a chance of washing something that comes off this. Yeah, that's a decent size wash and cure station though as well. Bigger than I thought it was, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. The, I've got the um, I've got the Elegoo plus which i was quite surprised how big that was really but like this takes seven liters of ipa so that cost yeah. me 40 quid just for the ipa yeah so does mine i only put three liters in <laughs> so i have to say the biggest uh i mean this is look you, you talk about the resin god look he's in here the best consumer machine sorry this is the biggest consumer machine that realistically you can get. So the only machines that are larger than this are the Piopoli double XLs. And I mean, like price wise, they're, they're insanely expensive. Let me just have a look. For the price of this? No, not for the price yeah. of this. No, no, for the no, price no, of no, this, no, no, Mega no, no, 8K. No. So it's the Piopoli. The Piopoli double XL is seven thousand four hundred and ninety nine pounds, and it has a. It's only four K for a start, yeah. so that's going to be a problem. Its resolution is one hundred and thirty seven news, which is actually pretty bad to be fair, because the resolution on this is forty three. So, like, I mean, that, that, that's insane. The print volume on this is 330 millimeters by 185 millimeters by 400 millimeters. The double XL has a print volume of 527 by 296 by 550. The VATS volume on the XL is 5.8 kilos. So it's five and a half liters. Five and a half liters <laughs> is how much it costs to fill that double XL. Um, whereas this, again, this is like this is like two liters that this takes. So again, look, I mean, I'm not I'm not comparing the two because I haven't done the other one. What I'm saying is, is that I don't consider seven or eight thousand pounds to be a consumer level printer at that point, right? You could get three of these. That to be a entry yeah. level prosumer level. You could machine. get three of these. Three of these. Yeah. Yeah. and still use the same amount of resin to put in three of them yeah yeah exactly and even if you had yeah if you had three of them and you'd you'd have way more build volume like be mad so that build plate there is twice the size as my ender two plus yeah yeah you know and i, I when i print on there i'm like oh, it's not too small it's not too big but that's a resin printer that's a different kettle of fish I think this is where people print the drip mount for this printer. It's going to get to print the drip mount for this printer. It helps. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to turn this on in a second. I'm just going to get these handles on first before I drop these screws somewhere, which I think we all know I will, because that seems to be the theme of this channel. Akuma, is that the one you made? Because I, I remember you doing a video a while back about it. You get a bed sheet when you do a vac clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything about this machine is giant. Like, everything about this machine is giant. So, 
it's everything on it is supersized. But it, it and looks... as I say, this is this is the largest consumer grade resin printer that you can buy right now. The closest thing you can get is an AnyCubic um, M3 Max. And I will say this right now, the build quality already is night and day between the two. The AnyCubic printer is built to be the cheapest high volume printer that you can pretty much get for resin um, but, in, that, in that size. But and the thing with this, it doesn't look out of place. No. It doesn't look like if someone walked past it, they would think, oh, is it a bookcase? You know, if they weren't into printers or yeah. it's something. Well, the thing like, is, it's all metal, it's all metal as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it's all aluminium. We've got one of my favorite features on any on resin printers. We have a front facing USB. Well, you're I not spinning that band, are you, to get to the back? Let's be fair. Oh no. I mean, so the only thing I would say that, that is a bit of an issue is that if you've got these in a print farm, you need clearance. You will have to have half the machine again each side to be able to open up to be able to open up these doors. There you go, Mike. Um, Akuma Mod says so, grab his speed profile. It takes 64 hours to print full volume on the frozen profile. On his, it takes 34 hours. So it just means you can go through two liters of resin in 34 hours. And yeah, yeah. Hours. Just stagger them. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could do. I suppose you could have a resin printer and a wash and cure station and then a wash and cure and so on and so forth. So Akuma Mods has literally just done um, a, a review on the uh, on the wash and cure station that Frozen have uh, have just released. So if you haven't already seen that, go and check that out. So we get the obligatory spatula, the, oblig the obligatory plastic spatula, some gloves for our hands much tinier than mine. We have a little a funnel. filter funnel. This is a Canadian one, I think, or a European one. So we've got a European plug and an American plug, but no UK plug. Luckily, I have my own. Oh, you can go through way more resin. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, you can just do double uh, resin in the same time. Yeah, it's all, it's all right when you it's all right when you see Matt live. He's got like 90 bottles behind him just waiting yeah. to be used. Picks and, and choosers. Then... Right. Let's not pour resin on my uh, limited edition jacket. And then we obviously have the uh the usb as well as well as a couple of little frozen stickers there we go oh okay, so i do not cool suggest box. the 8k resin with this machine it sticks it's too stick much to the plate. the plate really oh i think i see this don't it go in the holes in the plate and it's uh dicked yeah but out. surely you can just poke it through can't you well just I like non-stick was saying so a while ago about this as well with the, the it being quite um Sticky with the holes, yeah, a bit, a bit problematic sometimes. Well, okay, well, we'll see. Um, all right, let's plug this bad boy in. The power switch is behind the back, which is a little disappointing, but at the same time, once it's on, you probably just leave it on anyway. So it's, fine. it's a brittle resin, in my opinion. Okay, the 8K one is, is that, is that. Is that 8K resin in general, though, Matt? Because, like, I've I only use Sunloo and a bit of... I've got Shutu Box. I haven't used that yet. But the Sunloo's been fine. Only this resin. Okay. There we go. Right, so, as you can see, we've got the machine nice and open. What these do, so they do go all the way to the back as well. It's like so a DeLorean. Can see, so you get all of this room completely, right? It does mean that you have to have the space here for them to be able to swing out all the way, but full access to all of this, full access to the <coughs> plate, to the uh, to the vat so that you can open stuff up. Is the like, vat aluminium? 
that is aluminium and the handles look like they're um look like they're steel maybe or probably aluminium as well i suppose um i mean the whole the whole everything on it is metal so if you look you know you've got big chunky mgn rails you've got a nice big ball screw a nice optical end stop like it's ticking a lot of boxes so we'll put on the world's tiniest gloves are these regular people sized oh look at that regular people sized gloves people this is a big day so would, would a flex plate on this help with the ak resin then matt i know you're not a big fan of them the flex plates especially because the, the amount of resin you could hold on that it would be problematic Same non-stick. The holes haven't been an issue, but the grey 8K seems to stick too much, which is annoying because we have three kilos of it. <laughs> so we are going to have to... This is the resin that we were given. So this is the resin we will use. And we'll just see how much of a terrible idea this is. So they, they've I'm only going to um, put in... They've got that heat reactive resin now, haven't they? Where you heat yeah. it up and it changes. Color. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I, I'll say cool. this that feels a little gimmicky, if I'm perfectly honest. Like I'm yeah. struggling. I, I, it's for people who don't paint stuff, it gives you, yeah, depth in different the print if you don't paint stuff. Like, don't be wrong, if it's an effect that you like, fine. Like, well, when, it, they, like when they fine. did the video, they did it on a coin, didn't they? Yeah. If you didn't prime yeah. it and just painted, would it would it not change colour when it was heated up? Because the uh, primer seals it, doesn't it, a bit? Yeah, well, it's interesting because what they show that the, the finish on it looks really similar to me to like the residue you used to get when you couldn't properly cure your resin. Yeah. Do you remember when you did before you had washing cure stations and you were just dipping stuff in IPA, um, like. You'd always get that like white residue on your prints yeah. if you didn't wash them properly, and that's all it really looks properly. like to me. Yeah. So like, I mean, I get it; it's fine, but whatever. So here's a question: Then does this come factory leveled, or do I need to level it, and do I need to do the offset? Does it say in the instructions? Let's find out. Let's see who answers first. Jesus, thanks for or thanks for telling us things. Do not calibrate the Z-axis or disassemble yes, the printer. Well, that answers that question then. Non-stick says, yes, it does. There we Factory go. Factory level. Factory level. Fine. you got to love a Fine. factory level printer. Fine. Yeah. I won't do it for now. But if it crosses me. Right. Plug this in. Let's so, so where in the garage is this going, Mike? Right, so um, <laughs> um, that, was, maybe, that wasn't a that wasn't a confident that wasn't a confident behind answer. Behind Gandalf there, where the washing cure station is, yeah. got a, a focus on it. That's going. Um, so that will be able to all house the washing cure and the printer on that one. So, you, so a little resin workspace. Yeah. Ne don't do not level print and go forever. Well, Matt's Matt's screen went on his, didn't he? Do you remember? Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this: that is a thick resin. Like that's a thick resin. But fair enough, right? So let's add a new machine. We're just going to go with the stock profile for the moment. What's annoying is. My wife smashed our car up a few weeks ago. Oh, no. Now, my car I could easily fit that printer in the boot of my car <laughs> because I've got an Audi Q7. Big, so, go in there easy. The courtesy car they've given me is a Fiat 500. Awesome. You can get it on the roof. I think the car would squash if I put it on the roof. Do you know what? If you had your Q7, you could pull it in the boot and you could drive and print. Well, when they delivered the car, I went, like, are you taking the mic? They went, what? I went, that car will fit in my boot. Evening, James. The guy was laughing. What you did say, the guy was laughing to himself as he drove off. Yeah. <laughs> Great printer to add to the collection. 
So yeah. I have to say, this has been a machine we've been trying to get our hands on for a while. I've wanted this um, machine for a few years. We've we've been e ever since ever since it came out. It's it's been a machine we've been trying to get our hands on. Um, Frozen are really selective with the with the companies and channels that they work with. Luckily. We know the resin printing god, and as a result, he <laughs> got us. Well, he got us in ago, there. A few um, years ago, when this came out, there was no other printer that compared to this in size. No, not even. Well, no, that's not true. So there was the original Frozen Transform, which was this size, but only four K. Like other other and brands, like there was the, the Piopoli, so the Piopoli Moai, yeah. and the Piopoli. But now, if you look uh, at the Piopoli L. You've got a few a big resin printers this. now. You've got a few. But they big were, they were, yeah, now. they were still stupidly priced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fantastic printer. I'm not saying it's great, but it's the best in its class. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And to be clear, Frozen really were one of the first companies to to push the boundaries to 8K. Like yeah. they were, they were one of the first to do this. Um, you have like to you bear in mind that. That all the other machines that you all the other machines that you get when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with resin printing, especially, and when you started de dealing with the uh, with the original uh, with the original any cubics, were just using regular old screens, right? So so they were just buying a normal RGB screen to begin with, and then they were buying a black and white screen, and they were just fitting it to the machine. Six inches happened to be cheapest, and that's why they fitted what it was. Um, Dell's logo. So the cost for this right now is two thousand two thousand one hundred and ninety nine dollars. Oh. Yeah, plus shipping. Yeah. Thank shipping you very much. Nine. Okay. Um, so um, so yeah. So like so. Well, they've just done a venture, haven't they, with uh, Revo? Yeah, Point so they, well, they, they were one of the first companies that was really um, that was really doing. So you couldn't buy originally 4K or 8K resin printers, and the reason for that, <coughs> on the reason for that is because nobody made a 4K screen screen that was only six inches. Because why would you? There'd be no point. So they they. You know, so when the 4K started coming out and then the 8Ks coming out, this was companies like Duo Bond and a few other screen making companies making printer screens, but making screens specifically for 3D printing, which is not where they went through originally. Um, this is the cheapest machine of its size at 15 inches. It's the cheapest machine you can get. There are very few machines that are this size that are 8k there are very few mach machines um this size that um that have this level of z height so uncle jesse did a video where he printed a full size soldier boy helmet i think he also did he yeah. do a magneto helmet i can't remember i think it was a magneto one wasn't it i think he did a magneto one yeah um you, you know he's Black doing Panther one as well Black Panther, that was it. Yeah, sorry, yeah. you did a Black Panther one. You're right. You did a Black Panther one. And, like, I mean, it was amazing. No one had ever seen someone do that before, really. You know, the idea of printing a full helmet in resin printing was near enough unheard of. It wasn't something that you, you know, it wasn't something you used to do. And Frozen have been pushing the boundaries of this for quite some time. As I say, it's been the machine we've been trying to get our hands on for a while now. Um, and as I say, luckily we now know the we now we now know the uh, the 3D printing god and as uh, the 3D printing uh, resin god and as a result we uh, we we managed to get on the list. Um, but it's 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 a short list. The vast yeah. majority of people who actually reviewed these machines bought them. They just bought them on the pre on on, on the pre sales. Um, obviously, these machines do ship out of Taiwan. There are many many shipping issues in taiwan at the moment this one came to us inside of what was it a week and a half no less than that dispatch? less than that it was sent on a thursday and delivered on the wednesday well Mar martin it came got a day a early it was supposed to come on a thursday and it came a day early yeah Mar martin got a 
a four K off from not long ago, and that took about six days from uh, confirmation to delivery. Yeah. yeah, and this, and to be clear, this was FedEx. So this yeah. was this came from Taiwan, got here, and it was here inside of from when they originally sent it, when they said they were sending it to to us getting it was I think about a week and a half from when they originally said we're going to get you one. Yeah, because first of all, they said we need to um, on all our Black Friday deals, wasn't it? Yeah. They yeah, said yeah, we'll yeah. Send so, them out first and then we'll send yours. And then three days later, they went, yeah. yep, and luckily they had some left over. To so, be honest, um, I could go to my post office and send myself a letter. It would take six weeks to get to me. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but FedEx like, aren't going on strike. No, and that that's the plus. Like the you know, the Royal Mail arm and you know, my missus got a nice speed and fine through the post, which is quite amusing. She got what? She got speed and fine. She got a speed Again. and fine, even though yeah. even though the post the posties weren't delivering, but they still managed to get that through the door. Nice. Yeah, yeah. She's literally got like four days to reply. Great. From the date of postage or well, date of this letter. Oh, Jesus. Should we go into Nick? We live and breathe frozen. Funny how that comes through. Yeah, they always find a way to get that through, don't they? So, um, so yeah, so the the uh, the shipping for this. So let me get this right before uh, before I I misquote them. <laughs> only only a week though, Phil. And tariff, and I can I should be able to. Um, but to be honest, Amazon stuff's been really impacted as well in the last week or so. Yeah, I've I've had a lot of Amazon stuff come in the last week, and it's all come bang on time. Yeah, after stuff we've ordered's not arrived yet. I've got one thing at the moment that I'm uh, that I'm that I'm waiting that I'm waiting for. Um, well, the other day I ordered a new set of mics, like wireless mics. And two other things, and they came the same day at seven o'clock. Right, yep. that's because you oh. out. Oh, that's a frightening number. Okay, so FedEx International Priority, which is three business days, uh, six hundred pounds, <sighs> four hundred, six hundred and fifteen oh. US dollars and ninety three cents. And you can get this. For one hundred ninety nine dollars shipped from them. No, no, that's what that's what. Well, yeah, but no, the one hundred ninety nine dollars. I'm pretty sure is their. Uh, I think that's their wash and cure station. No, no, no. On on their website at the moment, you can order this. Yeah, they're doing ship. a special at the minute, aren't they? Where it's one hundred ninety nine dollars special. Yeah, one hundred ninety nine okay. shipping. Yeah. Because yeah. they just announced they've done um, a deal with Revo. Oh, okay, Coil, yeah, I see. Scanner. Yeah. Yeah, so, so even at that UK, price, still yeah, one hundred and ninety nine dollars shipping. All right, fair enough. Take six hundred. Well, I mean, that's definitely price. worth it because you're saving, you're saving nearly four hundred dollars doing that. It's like nearly four hundred dollars. Like it is worth that all day. I thought that was their wash and cure station they were doing for that, you, but that's obviously their Christmas deal. Is you, doing. You just don't shipping. realize how expensive it is for companies to get printers from. China or I whatever. think so, so like to be UK, so to be clear we didn't get an import charge when we brought this um when we bought this I think right. you are paying the shipping charge and the and the import charge I think you pay that as part of the shipping okay so I think they're paying that all up front non-stick was 550 dollars shipping yeah but the, so bear in mind that Things have got more expensive to ship out of uh, out of Taiwan now. Yeah, like, Paul, they're doing. It's expensive. It's an expensive place to ship from. Yeah, they've done a deal with Revo Point, the Pop Two, and they're doing a mighty 4K resin printer as a bundle now. What? Yeah, Frozen and Revo Point have joined forces. Okay. I saw it on their site today. Yeah. 3D scan and print anything you see. That's like someone telling me that, like, a chinchilla and a turtle are friends. And I'd just be like, what party did they go to that would have made them friends? Like, where would they have met? Like, so, I, just yes. don't, I, don't, I don't get where they would have... 
I don't get what the Venn diagram of the two events those people would have gone to. I don't understand whether they'd, whether they'd been in the same place at the same time. Mind you, I think it's like an I think it's from you and Anna as well, to be honest. Pardon? I think it's from you and Anna as well, to be honest. No, you couldn't. Yeah, you Anna, could. Anna, 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 Anna lucked out with me. Yeah, they've got a bigger one coming out, yeah. So, Phil's saying, be careful, FedEx like to send an invoice weeks after the event. They do, very much so. Me and Nonstick, back in the day, we won a roll of filament off reality. Yeah. And it cost us £18 for input. <laughs> Four weeks after it was delivered. It's savage. So, FedEx is the best one, though, because both DHL and um, UPS hold it ran hostage until you yes. pass it. They do. FedEx will at least deliver your parcel and then be like, hey, you need to pay us. Yeah. Um, they don't always. always. We know where you live. Yeah, always always. Follow up with it. You've opened the press. To be fair, it box. does say on the website shipping and tariff. So, um, oh no, the purchase price does not include any taxes, tariffs, and or shipping costs. Please note that we will not be accepting customers refuse to collect or return their blah, blah, blah. Customer responsible for the customer. Yeah. So customers will be responsible for the customs clearance in all countries except Thailand and Brazil, and we will charge you in advance and pay on your... Ah, right. We will charge you in advance and pay on your okay. behalf for any duties and taxes that are due on products purchased. Please note shipping costs. So, so their shipping policy, they are taking your tax up front as well as the shipping cost. So well, that's, that's the point. reason why... It's costing as much as it's costing. So for a start, the pound a is now weak against the dollar. And as a result, um, or it's weaker against the dollar. So as a result, everything in dollars goes up anyway. Um, but um, but ultimately, it means that you are actually paying that, that you're paying your import charge as part of that shipping cost, which means $615 is a little bit more palatable i suppose and the 199 is actually a really good deal because basically frozen are paying your import charge for you yeah for all intents yeah. and purposes like you're getting a, you're getting a good deal there and i want to be clear that this really is a machine that you just don't i mean look we, we've got it out of the box which i'll admit was probably harder than it should have been um but once it was out of the box put some resin in it load it up off you go. There's no messing about with a. There's no messing about with a. Um, there's no messing about with a profile. There's a stock one in G2 box. It's already got its test files on the uh, on the USB stick anyway. So that's um, so that's so that's fine. Like you know, it's, it's doing its job. So right now it's just printing one of the frozen tests. So we'll give that um, we'll give that a few minutes to is to finish off. Considering how big it is. It is quiet, to be fair. Well, we have had resin printers that you could hear while it was printing. Yeah. Um, so... My, my har harlot pus is quite noisy. Oh, yeah. No, that's terrible. But it's terrible for a lot of reasons. Oh, yeah. But they didn't make it, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I... So, I mean, this this with the fans on is not that loud. Like, I don't know if you guys can actually hear it on the microphone. No. But the microphone's turned up a fair amount. So <coughs> if, I'm doing, if I'm doing this, you can hear it. Yeah. So, uh, but you, I don't think you can really hear hear the printer. My There's no Z noise, but then it's not really moving very quickly. So fair play. Um, I'll say the uniformation was a little bit louder, but the uniformation was louder because it had a chamber heater in it, and this doesn't have a chamber heater. So what was going then... Was the was the heater, not the uh yeah. Are you gonna put a heater in this, Mike? No. I no. don't really think you'll need to, to be fair. So apart all... from last week, it's pretty stable in here. Yeah. It's the first time I've been in the shed in eight days. I I was in and out of here last week, but I weren't in here for very long. Like do you want to, uh, while we're here, do you want to show off how you're doing on the Samurai? Ooh. So, I should have had this painted by now, but last week, I just couldn't be in here. Oh, I like it. Oh, so good. So, that that is all 
resin. It's all resin printed except for the oh, speak of the devil. It does. Oh, and he's driving. So we're literally oh, witnessing a felony. This is what's happening now. <laughs> he, he wants a holiday. There you go. He Can you hear us? Nick. No. This is how we lose him. Yeah. This is this is this is how. Oh God! I don't want to have to go to another memorial thing. Like it's bad enough. <laughs> I'll go to Sanjay's next year. Oh, hello, hello. To get up. Oh. There we go. Can you hear us? I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to set up my headphone here, but it's not working. Oh, we can hear you now. Uh, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yep. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Working. So the resin god does go outside. Nice. Yeah, I didn't even believe that his house had an upstairs. No. <laughs> I just thought he just had a basement, like he was like a prepper. And he just like just lived in a just lived Get in ready. an underground, just lived Get in an underground Tuesday. bunker. And once a day his kids visited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, for half an hour. <laughs> He's got like a shoot that all of the uh, that all the uh, all the all the deliveries just come in and they just put them in the chute and then just and they just whisk down. Resin prepping, that's it. Oh, it's gone. So I'll say this it isn't quick at the stock pro oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> um, it isn't quick on the stock profile. So I mean I'm literally just printing the uh here we go, he's back. One second. There we go. Yeah. Is that better? It's a Hit the wrong button. There we go. I got my Bluetooth headset. Can I make them all the same size again? Oh, yeah. There we go. One second. Yeah, so this isn't, it isn't quick at the moment. On the stock profile, it's not fast. So um, so I did 30-second uh, bottom layers, and, I, and it's currently on 2.7 seconds a layer. But because of the okay. retract and the bottom lift speed and all of that stuff, I mean, it's still literally a 25-minute print to do the frozen test, which is like 100 layers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the light off the lay on the system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I need to turn that. I need to turn that off. Well, that, um, that's when my um, my Harlot Plus went quite noisy when I put Akuma's uh, speed settings in. Uh, <laughs> like, I just changed everything. I was, I was just today watching it go, and I was like, oh, my God, that is shifting. But it worked. Printed half the time. Yep. I think that was that the photocentric printer, wasn't it? That was really fast. When we first done it, it just started belting down towards the back, oh, yeah. didn't it? Oh god, that was so upsetting. <laughs> it was ridiculously so, fast. Talking about fast printers, uh sometime within this week I will be getting the Nexa zip. Oh, okay. I genuinely thought you was gonna say you were gonna get the overflow tank for your rocket. I got I got that. I got it. It only took it like a year. Yeah. Uh, I ha I have not printed with it yet. I've I've just been too busy with other stuff, so. Rick's just come on. Hi, guys. Hope you're all doing well. On the 6th of December, I pulled the trigger and bought a Bamboo Lab P1P. Oh, the Bamboo Labs machines are so good. Okay, so first and foremost, I will say we haven't tried the P1P yet. Uh, we've only had the X1 Carbon. The X1 Carbon only is special not people quiet. Get them. Pardon? <laughs> only special people get sent them. Only special <laughs> people get sent them, yeah. Um, so the, the the X1 Carbon is loud, like it is loud, and I would expect the P1P to also be loud, especially because it's got no panels. So, yes. like, I would I would love for the P1P to be as good. And on like the few people I know who have had them have said that quality wise, like print quality, it's still bang on. Um, but yeah, it's not quiet. So you you should probably prioritize printing your own panels, um, which so you can do. With the P1P, you are limited to PLA only. Just that player. Uh, well, you can do PETG. 
Um, and you could, I mean, again, if you printed your own panels, then there's no specific reason you couldn't do something like ABS. Um, but you're not doing carbons. You're not doing, which to be fair, if you get an X1, not an X1 carbon, then you're still yeah. pretty, on an X1, on a regular X1, you're still limited to pretty much PLA, PETG and ABS. Like you could probably yeah. do ASA, but you'll be burning nozzles like you'll 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 get through nozzles pretty quickly and they're I all have, integrated so once you I burn have, through one of their nozzles you just got to buy a whole new matt is so your is your seat wound all the way back you look like you're in a low rider am, am i what you're in a low rider seat wound all, the way, all the way back you look like you're driving a low rider no i'm in i'm in my car it looked like he was leaning all the way back like, like no 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 no, I, I don't I don't ride like so that. No, definitely not. wrong side of your car. No, it's on the right side. <laughs> no, that's no. no, no, that's the wrong that's side. That. No, that's the wrong know, side. Le lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Def definitely foreign that. There. Look at that fancy man who changed his job every six and a half weeks. That's right. <laughs> That's what he's cashing all his severance checks on, just <laughs> spending them on flashy cars and resin. That's right. You guys are walking into the store with me. Are we? Help! Help! We're trapped in his phone! Nope, sorry. You're, uh, in, his ear. you're, uh, you're in the ear. <laughs> Spoiled. Mr. German <laughs> has the bamboo P1P coming. Thanks to his wife. Thanks to his wife. Oh, okay. That's generous. The P1P is genuinely, it's a really nice machine. And to be clear, you can see what Bamboo are doing, right? They have positioned themselves in the market specifically to compete with everything that Prusa offers, right? So yep, they have very clearly positioned themselves for just the regular, um, just the regular Mark III to beat that, to beat the MMU, to beat it on speed, on on quality, on size, on range of printing yeah. materials, on ease of slicing and feature, they have and, and on price in every single area but, as well. But, but, it's but also astonishing to me how they, aggressive they, they've gone. They're getting them out from factory to people quicker than Prusa. If you want to yes, buy that Prusa, is true. Now, I mean, again, bear in mind that Bamboo Labs have a have very deep pockets. And that they are, they have, they have managed to really, you know, they've managed to stockpile a decent number of these machines. There are a lot of pre-manufacturing and they've managed to ramp up really, really quickly to a point where they're now fulfilling orders in almost real time at this point. So I don't even honest, know if you have a pre-order on the website at the moment or whether you just, or whether you're just getting them. Is this where he shows us he can buy FEMs, no. resin printers in the store, unlike our poor country? To be honest, Phil, it's probably next to the handguns. Is this the show where we can buy FDMs and resin printers? Oh, right, okay. One. So if you go on their website and you go shop now, an X1 carbon combo, end of January. James so about, about a four week, about a four week shipping delay. James James ordered another one, didn't he? And got it within a week. Yes, he did. Yeah, and that was that. That was before Christmas rush. There was a YouTube who posted. Interesting. So, what's video. the difference between an X one carbon combo and an X one carbon AMS? Fifty quid difference. What's the difference? But does it come with the AMS unit? You know, yeah. You can hook them up. Hold on. The AMS I've, no, I've no idea what the difference is between the two. Weirdly, if you buy the X1 Carbon plus the AMS, 1,479 including VAT, and it's currently in stock for the UK, whereas the Carbon Combo is out of stock until the end of January. But it doesn't tell you what the difference is between the two. They both seem to come with the same thing. Mm. So I don't really... So then when are you getting your P1P? 
The estimated first batch of P1Ps early January. Blimey. Well, some, a few people have got them this week. From yeah. Ordering. That's astonishing. That's quick. But that, to go that, from to go from literally announcing it like what? Four three weeks, weeks ago? Three. Yeah. Maybe even three weeks ago to ship in them in January. Blimey. There was a YouTuber who posted a video saying Bamboo Lab is selling printers at a loss to make money. So, okay. So, I, I, I've seen the video, right? Um, the idea of what he's putting forwards is the idea of lost leaders. It's the idea of effectively trying to price your competitors out of the market by selling your machines either at cost or at, um, or at a, a loss so that you can build a brand and build a reputation and then yeah. you gradually raise the price or you gradually reduce production costs. Now, the scale they're already operating at, I would challenge there's not much in the way of cost reduction that they can actually do. Um, I think they're pretty much the price they need to be. Um, and if anything, the price would only ever go up. I don't think they're going to be able to reduce that cost very much without removing features. Um, uh, so I would be surprised if they were going down the route of trying to build up to it. So if you took, for example, uh, oh, I don't know, a Voron as an example, right? If you were to go out and buy a Voron kit, then you personally would probably pay about £1,500 for all the parts. If you went to Blue Rolls and bought one of their kits, you'd probably pay £1,200. And you'd be paying £1,200 because they're buying a 1,000 of every component all at once. Yeah. Bamboo Labs cannot do that. So they're already buying at scale. So they can't do them for any less. I feel like they have aggressively priced them. And I feel like they've done that to make a statement. But I would be surprised if they then brought out a new product in the P1P and tried to do the same thing again. If you look at the P1P, there are very, very similar components within it, just no panels um, and no LiDAR and things like that. It's a much more stripped out machine. I, I, would, I would be surprised if they were... If they it's were that, really selling all of them at a loss at this it's point, it's that entry level printer for them, isn't it? They've got it. In, is. Bang! We're going to bring this in. Next one would be potentially a bigger one. You know, that's going to create another wave for yeah. in the community, and because they've got, because what they've done so well, no other company's actually got right. Yeah, and they have now. The well. the million dollar question is, you know. Is it truly that they're they're making them at a loss, or is it the fact that everything is so overpriced yet still cheap that we think that it's a, a loss? I think that their margins are tight, and I think their margins are lower than an industry standard, right? So if you take an, a prime example, and this is only because I was watching this the other week on Channel 5, if you take Costco as a prime example, right, everything that you buy at Costco has a 14% markup. That is the entire, that's, that's the entire profit margin for yep. every product in, uh, in Costco, 14%. Now, if you were to go to a high street supermarket, so, you know, Walmart or over here, Waitrose or whatever, they will have a bunch of different margins, anything from normally sort of 40 percent, anything up to 100 percent where they make it for five pounds, sell it for 10. Right. Yeah. If, right. If Bamboo Labs have decided to settle for, let's say, a 20 percent margin where other companies are making 70 to 80 percent margins. Those guys are making those margins because of what's called reverse logistics. So reverse logistics is when something you have breaks and you then have to send it back or <laughs> someone has to get parts out to but, you and things like that. Reverse like put there, he's put there that he downloaded the panels for his P1P. 
he completed yep. hardened nozzles were out of stock at 32 pounds which is cheaper than the nozzle set up on his sidewinder x1 absolutely that, it's that, worth that, remembering that the p1p doesn't have all the sensors that the x1 does so it doesn't this, have a lidar this, center but that's what gets me is their parts are yeah. cheap no well, perhaps, like, perhaps it's just a case of they're they're making less on each unit but they're going to work on volume yeah i think what they're working on is the idea that their machines are going to break less than other people's machines. They have put in, I mean, so for example, if you take Prusa as a prime example, right? People <clears> don't <throat> send back Prusas. You actually can't, they won't let you. But um, but even if you could, <coughs> you won't send back Prusas. They will buy a few spares and they'll send things out and their support wrapper is supposed to be what really helps you to get up and running. Yeah. People do send back Ender Threes. People do send back Creality CR10 smarts. People do send back GTEC printers. So the problem is, is if you're working on 20% margin and you have one of your machines sent back, you need to sell five more machines just yeah. to make up for the one machine that you had sent back to you. And and, and that's, the, that's what Amazon's brought, though, like you said. People can send back a printer yeah. from Amazon in a heartbeat in bits. Yeah. You, you could yeah you, you could take it out and put a toaster in there you know so you're us as consumers that are buying say of printers off amazon we're having to pay that markup yeah because of what happens but like bamboo are they're sending them to a set place in the uk they're going out from there yeah 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 they're, they're making Same sure they've got stock and everything else i mean look yeah. I, I don't know what Bamboo Labs looks like in two to five years' time. I don't know whether they still exist. I don't know whether they burn out. I don't know whether this is it or whether they've got plans for bigger machines, different machines, other machines, whether they do a laser, whether they do CNC. I don't know. I don't know that's, what their corporate strategy is. That's the million-dollar thing, isn't it, though? It's Prusa. At the end of the day, they've got longevity. It's just time. It, it doesn't matter what you as, – as much as the Bamboo is fantastic – Prusa yeah. have a history. They yeah. have they have a footprint in this community. They have a pedigree. They have, That's what it is. They have a pedigree. They've got support, customer support that no one else provides. Yeah. And you know, and they've got a community day. that is effervescent with rage every single time someone says they don't like the color orange. Yeah, and they're loyal. And again, yeah. when, when, when you've it's like same, I use Apple. My wife uses Android. She will not get an Apple phone. She's loyal yeah. to Android. And for me, I like the simplicity of an Apple. It works with everything I've got. I'm not going to change. So if Bamboo Labs, they suddenly vanish. AliExpress, Mellow, Triangle <laughs> Labs will make replacements. Oh, yeah. So I suppose they probably would do. And hey, look, it's very possible. I saw the other day that um, Bontex ultra high flow hot end, uh, ultra high flow nozzle has already been copied by the likes of Triangle Labs and things like that. And Not there will more than likely be some aftermarket stuff that comes out. Frankly, for the price that Bamboo Labs... Is, so, so when you look at an E3D V6 as a prime example, or even their Hemera, right? Their Hemera is like a hundred dollars like not cheap you can get a Hamera clone for like fifty dollars so you go all right well i'll probably just get the clone but if bamboo are making their hot ends for a couple of quid like like t like 10 pound for a hot end i don't think aliexpress would be able to make them and sell them and undercut by that much. I could absolutely yeah. believe that they're making a loss on the spares. I could and, absolutely and, believe that. They're but, probably selling those with almost no margin on at all. They're making that's probably where that. they've looked at. They've probably looked at that and gone, look, there's AliExpress, yeah. there's all these. What can we do to stop people copying our products? Let's sell it at a loss or at a lower price that people just can't repeat. You yeah. can't. I think I think the thing that's probably quite interesting is when you look at a company like Da Vinci, right? So Da Vinci did these uh, these color, um, they did these color FDM printers where you had to use their spools of like they were like absorbent filament and they used like inks to try and dye the filament or something. I think it was something like that. Yep. Um, 
And everybody ragged Da Vinci because it was closed firmware, closed closed software, closed slicer, closed uh, closed walled garden. Right, you had to use their materials, you had to use their slicer, all of that stuff. Um, and it was really interesting that Bamboo Labs have closed firmware. A cl I mean, a slicer that's Prusa slicer reskinned that they you know that if you want to use some of their features you have to use their proprietary filament you can use other filaments but if you want to use like a lot of their stuff some of their features you, you need to use the uh, you need to use the rfid recognizing things like he put and they've got a proprietary hot end they've got most of their parts are proprietary rather than interchangeable and it's interesting that a lot of people tend not to rag on that because what they've got at the end of it is a really good machine. So silent yep. mode just said there, what are your thoughts on the ammo box? You know, the, is it the uh, LRG? LRG. C so, yeah. uh, okay. So first and foremost, there was always going to be other machines um, of that similar. looked like a bamboo labs, yeah. right? There was always going to be other machines nobody designs a machine like that in a vacuum right there's going to have been engineers that throughout that process while they were designing it came and went sales people who came and went and all that sort of stuff right so i think that the eliarchi ammo box is another core xy and i hope that it's good the problem is is that bamboo labs had a really powerful approach to um to social media yep. which was that they engaged with like 60 i think it, uh, they had it's something like 70 machines out in the yeah. wild before they even published their kickstarter and yeah. the day they published their kickstarter all of the reviews dropped out and loads of people were going this machine's amazing i've had this for ages it's been really good YouTubers' comments and feedback and community feedback was put into those machines. They were developed, resent out. There were multiple versions that went out, and, and those were reviewed and everything else. The Eliarchi Ammo Box, they have made a decision that they only want people with over 100,000 subscribers to review those machines, <laughs> um, which basically means like four guys. So that's nice, and that's fine, but those four guys are really busy, and they don't really care. So they'll nope. do a video on that machine and it will be fine. And they'll probably say, yep, it does what it says on the tin. What the difference is, is when you get to the edge of text and you get the sort of 40K, 50K, 10K, 3K channels coming in, they all come at it from completely different angles and they all focus on different things. They yep. take apart the machines in different ways. They show you different areas. They delve into it in different ways. And what you get <coughs> is a community that comes together and you get a bunch of different opinions. And the consensus is that something is good or something is bad. Yeah. You don't get that with the Ammo Box. You'll get maybe four people's opinions. And the view is, is because those people have a very large reach that that must mean that they're really good, that, that, that that must mean that they'll sell loads of machines and everything else. And they probably will sell a few machines. Will it be as popular as the bamboo? I challenge the answer is no, not unless they can do it for a savagely lower price. Um, and, uh, and like, hard to call in the early Archie hour box, been seeing loads of exciting things on them. I was hoping it would hit cause a stir but there seems to be some two they seem to have some issues to address and have moved release so i hope but that's how it is in the youtube community makers community and that's true andrew it is that that is how it is when you get the bigger channels the bigger channels create the noise right the bigger channels get the attention and then the smaller channels come in and they provide different in-depth reviews. They go at it from different angles. They feature it in different projects. They use it in different ways. Like So, for example, when Uncle Jesse reviewed his Mega 8K, he focused on large prints. He was focusing on helmets and cosplay and everything else. That's not what Akum Mods featured when he did yeah. his. Although I think you did do a... Um, it, I think you did, did do. Uh, did you do a Black Panther mask? 
Yes, I did. Uh, it was yeah. one that they had pretty much like pre-slice, so it was yeah. it was gonna print. So. so like that was cool seeing that big print, but then the Koma mods went down the road of like so. There's loads of other there's other stuff first. You know, it's you know it showed some of the detail that it can do and some of the some of the smaller finer prints and things like that. It's called Glamour Reviews first, then Consumer Reviews is what we do on our channels. And I'd agree. I'm a normal user, yeah. as, as, as not normal as I seem. Um, you know, we do, we, you know, we do, we do sort of things like, we do things like this. So we do things like the God of War acts and things like that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's what we, you know, we do, we do different things with that. And generally the models we do when we review stuff, are generally different as well because we tend to do bigger models in pieces. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we do things like um, so. Here we go. So this is something we did on the uniformation. So let's see if I can get this. Amazing to printer. There we go. So this is a little owl bear thing from a uh, from a tabletop game. And it is but all the claws stunning. are sharp on it. Yeah, the claws are really sharp on it. Like when you're trying to take supports off, it really, really hurts. Um, so like so it's <laughs> cool seeing stuff like that. It's cool seeing different use cases and it's cool seeing different people doing things in different ways. You know, it's cool seeing how different people look to upgrade their machines. Agreed. Joel was lovely as he is, never had a clue about printers. He couldn't upgrade, rewire, or build from scratch a printer, but he's still near the top. So, okay, I would probably debate that. I think Joel knows – Joel's been doing this for, like, eight years, and even if just through sheer photosynthesis of being near people who are doing it, I think he does know quite a lot. I think that, I think that Joel's channel is one that is there – it's hilarious. It sounds like James keeps farting. It's Mike, to be clear. It's not. It's, it's Matt. Oh, it's Matt. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. We have finished this. So, so I don't disagree. I think the difference is, is Joel is a business, right? Ooh. Joel is paid to do the reviews. There we go. One second. Look at that. Back in the den. Like, as well as, although you see Joel... Joel as a camera person and an editor. Yeah, Joel is a business. Joel is paid to do his reviews. He's paid as a journalist to give his opinions. And we aren't. So, like, we put on all of our streams that we have paid promotions. But this isn't a paid promotion. They didn't pay us for a review. We just got a machine from them. And we feel like that's a payment in kind, I suppose. So we always declare it. Um, but but then like, we don't send our videos to the company to review before we release them. Yeah. So, fun story. There is not a print on this bill plate. <laughs> you broke it. There is not a print on that bill plate. You need to take the film off the screen. Did the, uh, pardon now? Is there a film on the screen, Matt? I believe there is. Is there a film on the screen, Matt? Uh, it's been so long, there might have been. And no Usually one felt the is? need to mention this to me. Like, comparing the resin printer you're using, is it similar to the Eligu Jupiter? Um, no... See, no, drip, probably not. Drip, drip, drip mount. Yeah, it's just dripping onto <laughs> uh, onto what I'm assuming is a. I said that earlier when you put the resin in. Oh, did you, Mike? So what he's doing here for you? He's setting himself up to fail so you make it look good. Well, I've been doing that for a few years. If that's the case, <laughs> <laughs> like it's been a pretty long build up. If I've been if I've been doing that the whole time, like, I've been making him. I've been I've been queuing him up for the last four years. I can't believe just so that when this printer anything. turned up, he'd be he'd be able to look good. Right. Well, I guess in that case, then 
as Paul oh, has said, that he made, Paul is claiming that he very boldly told us that there was something on the screen. Um, I don't, I don't personally recall that being called out, but. Let's pull that up. There's nothing on that screen. There's nothing on the screen. I am going to have to get the, uh, what I'm hoping is a cured bit of resin at the bottom of this. Oh, that's tricky. Yeah, that was resin dropping on the thing, on the thing though. Brilliant. Okay, so there's three protective films, two on the tray one on the lcd on the fet on the oh, fet. No. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no there's resin in the tank oh what a mess ladies and gentlemen well we all knew there was going to be a way that I made this harder than it needed to be. And we're about to find out how difficult it is to pour a full tank of resin back into the world's tiniest funnel. <laughs> <laughs> That's like trying to have a pee on a motorway in a Lucas bottle, isn't it? Oh, it's a really small funnel. <laughs> oh, well, the good news is the screen works because there's a uh, there's a fully cured print test on it. <laughs> I reckon I could do this without the funnel at this rate. moaning about doing this earlier it's easy non-stick oh, <laughs> that's probably the worst thing about the mega is handling that build that uh that is not fun oh if you, look, you can see the print there yeah there's definitely a print in it Andrew has put, James, you should be used to pouring a large load into a small hole. Wow. I mean, that's fair. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do muck up a lot of 3D prints. So I, I am used to it. And I'm now realizing that what you meant was sexual. So thank you for that. Oh, now I'm not going to get it out. Okay. Are you, oh, well, that went straight on the floor. Are you sure there's like a protective film on this? I don't see it. You tried reading the instructions to see if it says. Give me a Are second. Are you breaking things? I mean, no, I haven't. I haven't read the instructions, no. I've just noticed that there's resin on the screen. <laughs> Order a lunch, but they refuse to give them more They refuse to give them a lunch. Oh, stop doing that. I've not heard of to be honest, most right. of my, my There's definitely nothing on the screen. Uh, well, like I said, Chad, I do highly suggest getting a hold of Bullet Brand and uh, getting a screen protector for that. Yes, I will be getting a screen protector for it just because, I mean, if I don't get a screen protector, I think Frozen might take out a court order against me. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. So the only thing I changed in the slicer, hey, Jerry, um, you've got to break the bro code and check the manual. This is horse crap. I hate checking manuals. Matt, what's the... Probably won't even tell me. What's the exposure time for, like, the 8K resin? Well, it's 2.7 seconds at the moment per layer. And well, it's regardless, that should have printed. Pardon? That should have printed. So that won't and be And then 30 seconds, I think, on the... Um... 
But all in fairness, it did print. It just wasn't stuck to the build plate. Yeah, right. well, yeah, there is that, yeah. So, keynotes before start, yeah. Protective measures, yeah. No, it doesn't say anything about doesn't say anything about there being any um, protective films on it. Okay. And there aren't any on the top. I, of the I couldn't remember. And even if there was, mine is a pre-production unit, so it's different than literally everybody else. Of course else's. it so. is. Yes. <laughs> fine. All right. Well, let's go to thirty-five and two point eight, then, or two point nine. To see whether the burning layers weren't enough. Seems odd to me that they wouldn't have been, but just pour a look. Oh, yeah. and that's the cap going in. Excellent. This has gone fantastically. I'm really glad this is on live. <clears throat> this will all end in tears. That just that falls right off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yeah, maybe the burning layers just weren't high enough. The burning layers were at 30. Perhaps they should have been at 35. That's what I have them at. I don't Is ever it? change that. I have that across the board on every single printer. What, you have 30? Yep. Or you have 35? No, 30. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll try again. I won't make oh, you guys watch you it. You can have your resin and just stack your finger in your ear. <laughs> that was to get the resin in my ear out. And to be fair, I was using my little finger, which isn't one of my resin handling fingers. That's specifically my ear finger. <clears throat> right. Well, look, guys and dolls, I'm not going to make you sit here for another... <coughs> um, for another 45 minutes whilst that uh does its does its thing so um you might have some spare shoots for screen protector. yeah you might do on the gk2 the screen protector is taped down and not noticeable until i seen their video it's not a lot it's alive it's not alive till james is making a mess yeah true so okay guys i'm not going to make you sit here for another 45 minutes whilst this does another print but what I will do is I'll pop some videos up on TikTok tomorrow once they're uh, once I've done a couple of uh, print tests. We'll get those up so you can see what it's like. Yeah. You're going to be seeing a lot of this machine. So um, so we have a lot of different models and a lot of different projects planned that are more than likely going to feature this. This is now easily our biggest resin 3D printer. Our closest machine to this is the <coughs> 3 Max. Uh, but the M3 Max can't do full helmets. It can't do cosplay stuff. Like, I really want to do this Kratos axe. I really want to do all of this in resin. I actually ended up doing it on the bamboo, and it came out amazing. But, um, but like, I really would have liked to have... Uh, I really would have liked to have done it all as one, as sort of, like, just in half and done it in resin instead. So you may end up seeing another Kratos axe being done. Um, but other than that... Until tomorrow, our, our competition is still running. So check out the link in the video description. There has been a, a lot of entries. There is a lot of prizes on there. There mm -hmm. is a longer, uh, there's a, there, no, there's not. There's a Voxel Lab D1, a Voxel Lab Proxima resin printer, an Orange 10, is it, Carl? Uh, Orange 30. Orange 30. There's also um, there's also an Ender Three S One Pro. There's a Minchin um, there's a Minchin Beagle time lapse camera. There's a couple of Honey Badger hoodies. There is uh, there's some models by Wicked and Berserk, one of our favourite Patreons. And there's also some upgraded parts for Creality machines as well. Um, so absolutely go and check out that thing. It's free to enter. We are doing the giveaway tomorrow. So there's not much time left for you guys to enter. It is open to everyone globally, which I want to be so clear is going to financially ruin me. But um, but hey, we're just really grateful for the fact that we made it um, to 10K that, uh, that I'm just not going to 
you know, have brand name bread for a month. That'll probably be fine. I'll just, I've been, I've been preparing for this thin winter for some time. So, uh, so with any luck, I'll just, I'll, I'll just lose a bit of weight. Day he's going to have his eating on. Yeah, this is the last day I'm going to have me eating on. Yeah. If anything, I'm just going to sit inside this printer for a while to see if I can warm myself up. So thank you very much for joining us, guys and dolls. Do not forget to check out the link in the video description that will take you through to the uh, will take you through to the competition. Don't forget to like and subscribe to anyone who isn't already. Thank you, everyone in the comments who has joined in and chatted with us. Thank you for your continued support. If we don't see you tomorrow, why? There's free stuff. It's free. <laughs> why wouldn't we see you tomorrow? But if we don't see you tomorrow, Merry Christmas. Have a great time. Hope you have time with your families. For those of you who don't have families, congratulations, because mine's terrible. So uh, so you can uh, you can just feel good about yourself, really, if you've not got to spend time with them, because mine are all just awful. So, uh, so <laughs> I will catch you on the next one. Thank you very much for joining and watching with us. We will speak to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.